allow me to welcome you all with the traditional salutation of the prophets. In the words of the prophets of God, I say to you, Assalamu alaikum, which means peace be unto you all. You are attending this course on the Holy Bible, and I happen to be a Muslim. Naturally, the question arises in the mind of non-Muslim, how can a Muslim talk about the Bible? What is his authority? Now, the Muslim world seem to have accepted me as an authority on the Christian Bible. But the non-Muslims, they don't know. And the best testimony, the best reference I can present to those of you who are not Muslims is from the mouth of the opposition. The people who are out there to give battle to me, let them testify about me. This book has been published in South Africa called The Challenge of Islam in South Africa. The publisher, they call themselves Jesus to the Muslims. They are interested in preaching to the Muslims. They are not interested in the Hindus or the Jews. They are interested in the Muslims. Mission to Muslims. Jesus to the Muslims. Now in this book, the author uses the name Ahmad Didat more times than his Lord Jesus Christ. If that is not a testimony, the whole book is about me, but it's the challenge of Islam in South Africa. The man speaks about the Tablighi Jamaat, the movement among the Muslims, the religious pious people, he says they are not a threat. They speak about the Muslim movement, he says they are all fanciful names. The only guy you know, who is in the forefront of this missionary work or giving battle to the Christian missionary is Ahmad Didat. So the whole book is devoted to Ahmad Didat. Here is another publication called The Commission. It's a Christian magazine published by the Baptist Church in that they had a Baptist journalist of this commission visiting South Africa and they couldn't miss out the Islamic Propagation Center. So they came to my offices in my absence and they went through uh, finding out what they're doing, what work is being done from here, and they wrote an article. And in that article, a visit to the mosque, all that is included here, and they have something to say about Ahmad Didat. A defender of Islam, that's my title. In this Christian magazine, I am called the defender of Islam. And uh, it's quite a lengthy article. But this is a suggestion by this magazine to Christian missionaries. It says, for anyone who would witness to English-speaking Muslims, anybody, any Christian who would go and talk to the Muslims, English-speaking Muslims, especially in Africa, the broadside of Islamic defender Ahmad Didat may be a required reading. You have to read my books. You have to familiarize yourself with my logic, my way of thinking. So in other words, this cause is to help the Muslims so how to defend themselves against the Christian missionaries. And if there are missionaries here, you are also welcome. If you want to give battle to the Muslims, you'll know what you're going to meet. So it's also you know, equipping you with some type of special knowledge. So if you go and knock at a Muslim's door, and the Muslim is likely to confront you with this, with that, with that, so now you have an answer for that. So you are also it's a favor to the Muslims as well as non-Muslims. Now in this course, we have given to you all a free Bible. This is the authorized King James Version of the Bible. It's given to you free. It's yours for the taking. And I would like you all to, on the cover, you open the book, you see the combat kit, how is this combat kit? There is a blank page, blank white page. I would like you to put your name and address in the cover with this recipe. 
you use this red pen for this marking as well as every other marking that you will do in the book. The Bible is yours to take, take home. The pens are to be returned. At the end of the course, you return the pens. But the Bible is yours to take. What you do with the Bible is your business. If you feel that you made a mistake in going through this course and you made some notes on it and you feel like destroying this book, that's your business. You want to burn it, burn it. You want to tear it, throw it away, that's your business. If you want to cherish it, you keep it as a memento you know, of this course for your children, that's your business. So this is yours to take. But if you feel that no, you want to leave it behind, at the end of the course also you can leave it behind. But this is yours, free of charge. Put down your name and address. Your name and address. Your name and address. This is your property. As I said, at the end of it, you can trade it and throw it away. But this is yours now to take. Your name and address. That's it. Your name and address. In some of my courses in the Middle East, I had come across some Muslim fanatics. They said, no, they won't put the name and address. This book is too sacrilegious for me to put my name and address. I say, in that case, you leave the book and walk out. So people have walked out. Well, they just don't want to touch it. That's a programming. Brainwashing. <laughs> this is, I don't touch it. I can't put ethics my name to it. I said, in that case, leave my book and please walk out. Fair. Fair. If you don't want to put your name in address, then you are not fit for the course. What you do with the book, I said, is your business. What you do afterwards is your business. I'm not going to follow you up to find out what you're doing. What, how far have you gone with the book? No, that's not my job. So, you see, Islam and Christianity happens to be the two major missionary religions in the world today. Both are competing for the hearts and minds of people. And in that, the Christians, they have in the battle now, 72,000 crusaders. These are not priests, ministers of the church, parsons, predicants. Mm -hmm. These are the crusaders of Christianity. There are 35,000 occupied in Africa at the present moment. Christian crusaders. There are thousands in Indonesia, thousands in Pakistan, thousands in Bangladesh. They are wanting to convert the whole world to Christianity. It's a fair proposition. That's the sincerity they feel. They want to save the world from hellfire. And they are doing their job. Islam ha also happens to be a missionary religion, but unfortunately, there are no Muslim missionaries. So now we are at the receiving, ed, uh, receiving end. We are the sitting ducks, the targets. The Christian is knocking at our door. The main battle between the Muslim and the Christian is the battle between the two books, the Quran and the Bible. That's a battle. The Christian says that the Bible is God's word. The Muslim says the Quran is God's word. I think you know that. All of you know. That's a battle. Christian says this is God's book. Muslim say this is God's book. The Christian says the Bible is not the word of God. I'm sorry. The Christian says the Quran is not the word of God. So the Muslim says it in turn, he says the Bible is not the word of God. The Christian says you Muslim will go to hell. So the Muslim says you Christian will go to hell. This is mere argumentation. So, I have discovered, I said, no, we don't talk like that. I met a Christian pastor when I was in the Cape, and I've suggested this to him. He shares with me, he said, you know, Mr. D, Dad, I've been watching your videotapes. I said, yes. I said, any questions? He said, no questions. It's surprising. You are a Christian. You see my videotapes. I'm sure you don't agree with everything that you see. You must have some questions. I said, no, no questions. 
So I suggested this to him that look, this is our problem between us two. I said, you see, when the Muslim says that the Bible is not God's word, I will tell you why we say that. You are the prejudice. You are, you are lambasing the Quran. No, I said, look, I will tell you why we say that the Bible is not God's word. And for that, I said, let me give you a parable. Jesus Christ ever spoke in parables. People love parables, stories, stories. We love to listen to stories. So I said, let me give you a parable. The parable is between about so your father and your mother are sleeping. And in the middle of the night, a burglar gets in. The thief at all. And your father wakes up and he grapples with the burglar. But the burglar is too powerful. He overpowers your father, he floors him, sits on his chest, and is strangling him to death. Your poor mother comes to the rescue and she saves your father's life. So your father tells you, John, that's what's his name, John, chop off your mother's hands. Cut off her hands. He says, Daddy, are you joking? He says, No, my son, I'm serious. Says, Daddy, have you been drinking? He said, My son, you, you know, we are born again Christians. You know, we don't touch that stuff. And he knows that. The father doesn't mean. But Jesus said, Look, you're talking like a drunk man. Have you been drinking? He says, No, my son, you know, we don't drink. Then, Daddy, you are crazy. He says, no, my son, I'm inspired. He says, who inspires you, daddy? The devil. This is devilish. This woman gave you 40 years of endless pleasures. She gave you so many beautiful children. And now she saved your life. And you want to chop our hands? Daddy, you are crazy. He says, no, my son, I'm inspired. He says, who inspires you, daddy? He says, God. He said, you are crazy and your God is also crazy. If this is so, that my mother saving your life and you want to chop off her hands, then you are crazy and the God who inspires you is also crazy. Am I right, John? Pastor John. Say yes. If that is so, then this my father is crazy and this God also is crazy. So your father says, my son, I can't help you. Open the book. Open the book, the Bible. Book of Deuteronomy. And all of you, I want to open Deuteronomy. Those of you who are handling this book for the first time, at the very first pages you'll find there the contents. Contents. And see in the contents is the fifth item there, Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy, the, in the contents. And you find Deuteronomy, the book. It's the fifth book of the Bible. But to find any reference, you see the in the, uh, the contents, it tells you what page, you find Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy, please use it. No, it's from my language. Oh, okay. But you have to do the work on this one here. It's the same as that. No, no, no. But now when I'm going to ask you to make notes, you won't be able to make notes here. You'll have to make notes on this one here. I'm fine. Okay. In any case, you can me. See that? This book, you turn what page it says? 200, what page is it? 159. 159. 159. Page 159. <coughs> Deuteronomy, page 159. Chapter 1, you see, you know this chapter 1, start with verse 1. I want you to page through slowly and look for chapter 25, 25 of Deuteronomy. Don't turn too many pages. Deuteronomy, chapter 25. Deuteronomy, chapter 25. Correct? Chapter 25. See verse 11 and 12. 
Can you see verses 11 and 12? Verses 11 and 12. Got it? 11 and 12. Right. All of you together now. All one. Don't do anything. Don't write anything. Don't write anything. I will tell you when to write. All of you together, please read verses 11 and 12. When start. When strive together, one with another, and the wife of the one grow up near, for to deliver her husband out of the hand of him that smiteth him, and putteth forth her hand, and taketh him by the secrets, then thou shalt cut off her hand, thine eye shall not pity her. That's all. This woman comes near to help the father, he helps the father, saves his life, and now the father is his chop of her hand. And you mustn't show any pity for her. No compassion, no mercy, chop of her hand. So I'm telling John, John, your father is crazy, and the God who inspires that is also crazy. He admitted that. He said, well, there must be some explanation. I said, yes, give it to him. Explanation, you say, there must be some explanation. You read there, it explains to you everything that this woman comes to help your father, she delivers him and saves him, and now in the end, the father wants to chop off her hand and don't show any pity for her. There must be an explanation. I said, give! He said, there must be some explanation. I said, give it to me. There is no explanation. So now, I want you to write across the two pages, across the two pages, across the two pages, that open book of yours, chop off her hands as a heading on the top on the white space. Chop off her hands. Chop off her hands. Please use this. Chop off her hands. Right across two pages. Right across two pages. Right across two pages. The whole thing stands out. That's it. That's it. Right across the two pages. Chop off her hands. Don't be shy. Don't be shy to write both. That's it. Now, verses 11 and 12. Verses 11 and 12. Frame them. Frame them with the red this thing. Frame the verses 11 and 12. Frame them. That's it. Very good. Very good. This won't be entered into any competition, so don't worry. You don't need a ruler. Just frame it, right? Frame it. Box it, all right? That's a better word. Box it. Box it. Box it right round. That's it. Box it right round. this book, you close the Bible, and you go home, and you meet somebody, a Christian missionary comes and knocks at your door, and you tell him, I says, you know, there's something like this, like that in the Bible. There's no nothing like that in my book. Show me. Now, you can't remember you found me, though it is difficult. For the first time in your life, some of you might have heard the word Deuteronomy. 
is hard to remember. And where you're going to start in an encyclopedia of 66 books, the Bible. It's an encyclopedia of 66 little books. Where you're going to find Deuteronomy? So it's going to make a fool of you. So to make it easy for you, in this combat kit, open your combat kit now. Just a cover. Combat kit. Combat kit. First page of the combat kit. Open the combat kit now. And you see an index. You see the index there, the first page. Index. Now in the index, you see, and the W right at the bottom, women, women, item number 43. You see that subject, women? Yes. It says where? Page 32. Women is on page 32. So open page 32 of your combat kit. Page 32 of your combat kit. Last page. Last page of your combat kit. And you see the subject women there. 43. Yes. Have an arrow coming down. Look, 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 look at me. Have an arrow coming down. 43 coming down to the blank space at the bottom. And right in the blank space. Chop off her hand. Have an arrow coming down. Right down there. That's right. That's right. That's right. Mm -hmm. That's right. That's it. That chop off her hands. Chop off her hands. Chop off her hands. Should be this. And the arrow comes down. Right down. Be right. Page P P full stop 183 P 183 That's where you'll find it. Where are you gonna start looking for? Chop off a hand where? So in your Bible if you look on P 183. Good. P 183. Good it here? Here, here, here. So now you wanna you wanna find anything about woman? See us about the woman chopping off a hand. And the, and, the, and the W, so you find the W, it's already there. This was not included in the book, so now you are doing the chart. Page 183. Page 183. Yes, I want to ask a question. Yes, yes. Um, in all fairness to this, this script, it, it um, doesn't say anything about the one man being attacked by a thief. It just says two men striving. In other words, it could be just two Jews right. fighting involved and, and grabbing the, the man's parts right. and so right. isn't it just another law uh, that um, she must have her hand chopped off or getting involved in the fight? Person, not necessarily defending no. her. Whether they were friends, they had too many drinks, whatever. They were gambling, whatever happened. Two men strive. Strive in English means to struggle. Together, together, strive together. And the wife of the one draweth near to deliver. In English, deliver means to save. To save her. From the one that smited him. I'm gonna kill him. If he kills him, after that he's, he's gonna rape her. This man, usually the guy gets in and he has the better of you, the man is out of the way, he's gonna rape the wife. It's happening all the time. You kill the man, rape his wife or his mother. This woman comes along to help and saves the husband. And now, you must chop off her hand. And you must not show any pity for her. Whatever the logic. Person saves your life, your benefactor. Now on what method is used? You know, if you learn karate, you my sister, you know, there are women who are learning karate now. And in karate, you know, this man comes along to attack, he's gonna rape you. And he can also kill you and rip you after that. Yeah. Rape you and rip you. Like Peter Sutcliffe. He did it, did it to 13 women. These guys, 
sodomizing little boys and murdering them. You are under attack. And you learn karate. What you gonna do? Say no, I must not kick him in his crotch. You know crotch? You know crotch? Hmm? That's his weakest part. The guy is trying to get at you, and if you have learned it, so your knee in his crotch. You won't do that. Yet you know, you are too decent. You are so decent you like to be raped. And raped, you prefer that to kicking him in his crotch and disabling the guy. What would you do? You wouldn't do that. You are too decent. Hmm? Allow yourself to be raped and ripped. You know, that's a common sense tells you. Any method that you have, you know, poking in his eyes, busting his eardrum, anything to save a person's life is legitimate. In, under any law on earth, in any country, even under this new South Africa of yours. Self-defense. Defending your loved ones. Anything you can do. But this woman, she did something. She reached for his private parts. She knows the weak link. Man, his weakest link. You can disable the guy. No matter what a giant he is. Samson had his weak link, his head. But every man has got his weak link. And she knows the weak link. She used it and she saved her husband's life. You chop up a hand for that. The logic. The logic. It's coming from some city source. Yes, sir. Yes? I don't get the exact way, but I'll take it to the place to chop your hand. You see, I know, the language, the other Bible, yes. the modern Bible, it says she caught him by the genitals. Oh. Hmm? Must end. Baba must end. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm so, the, the, the King James Version is very diplomatic. Right. Catches him by the secrets. Says, no, what secrets? Huh? So Baba must end. He was, who is Allah? Right. By his genitals. Caught him by. <laughs> now, the woman to save the husband's life, man, is that a crime? Oh, he says, Your mother's hand got stuck with the guy's testicles. She can't let go. Huh? Then chop off the guy's testicles, man. Then to watch off your mother's hands. If your mother's hands got stuck, she can't let go. She fell in love with his balls. Then what you do? She can't let go your mother. So what are you going to do? Chop off your mother's hands or chop off that guy's testicles? What are you going to do? Yeah! Common sense, man. Whether you are a European or a Bantu or an Asiatic, anybody. Common sense tells you this is the way. Save a person's life. There's no fanciful things there. It is silly. But now, I'll show you in that very chapter, that very chapter, something that sounds like the word of God. God is merciful. He's not the author of confusion. Verse 4 of Deuteronomy, you don't go over it. Verse 4 says, of Deuteronomy chapter 25, it says, Thou shalt not muzzle the ox when he threaded the corn. What it means is this. You see the Jews, you know, you, the old fashioned way, the ox is going on to the corn, losing the grain, and the ox knows that that is food. So while he's doing the job, it takes a bite. Mm -hmm. It tries to loosen the grain, gets a few and the thing falls off from the mouth. It carries on for half an hour, mm -hmm. then it gives another bite. So the Jews say, hey, this oxen are eating the corn. So they used to tie the mouth, tie up. So the thing can't catch the grain, can't get the corn. So the merciful God says, don't do that. Do not muzzle the ox. Don't muzzle it. Don't tie them out. How much is going to eat the poor thing? How much? How much? Whole day is working for you. Huh? How, many, how many grains is going to chew? How many cobs is going to eat? This merciful God is so compassionate to the ox. He's not compassionate to the woman. I don't know. It's coming from the same God. The same God who is merciful to the ox. He's not merciful to the human being. For saving a person's life. So I say, it can't be from God. That's the logic. And you can come forward. Come forward with the arguments. The more you argue, the more mess you get into. The more they're going to argue, the more greater shit they will get into. See, because 
What is this? Secret? I have to explain to you now. It's the genitals. What is genitals? As is your standing. You understand that now? Yes. Right. So now, what happened? She saved your father's life and now must chop off her hands. Because she caught the Messiah. Huh? Well, what's wrong? To save a person's life, man, any bloody thing you can do is, is valid. Anything you do to save a person's life. Am I right? Yeah. Yes. Self defense. Self -defense. Yeah. If not, that guy, after finishing your father, is going to rape your mother. You prefer that? No. You prefer that? No. But you are too, you are too, too saintly. You don't do that. So wait for your husband to die, then the guy will be new. You want to wait for that? Wait. That's your choice. Your mother's choice. She likes to be raped. Right. Now, this is, in other words now, the Christian missionary he will go to a Muslim house who has been through this course, he will be confronted with this. So I'm giving you a chance to think and plan and answer for that. I'm doing you a favor. Either you accept my logic, say, look, this is silly, this is not the word of God, or you have an answer, have the answer ready. That's all. As the Christian magazine is telling you, you have to familiarize yourself. How to give battle with this type of mentality? You. You're going to tell him, say, look, this man, this is not the word of God. Silly man, nonsense. A God who's merciful to the ox is not merciful to the human being. What kind of a God is this? And this woman is saved your life, your father's life. <laughs> now, we will go to again to combat kit, combat kit of the book. That combat kit is an index, is an index for my students, Muslim students, to familiarize themselves with the Holy Bible. This book, if we started going through it, it will take three months. It's a three months course. But we want to do a two hour job. So we can't afford to go through all the niceties. You know what we Muslims believe about the Holy Bible. What we believe about the Bible. What we say about the Bible. You will ask, the Christian asks, is the word of God not there in the Bible? So we say, yes, the word of God is there. In the Bible, in the Holy Bible, the word of God is there. The word of the prophet is there. The word of the historian is there. In the Bible. <coughs> and there are many things others besides which no decent man can read it to his mother or his sister or his daughter or even to his fiance if she is a good lady. There are four different types of evidences in the Bible. Four different types. And this little booklet explains all that. It's a lecture in itself. It's the Bible God's word. You can take one each as you go out. That explains the Muslim position. What do you think of the Bible? The word of God is there, we give you examples. The word of the prophet is there, we give you examples. The word of the historian is there, we give you examples. And many things besides. We are going to deal with many things besides. Which no decent man can read it to his mother or his sister or his daughter or even to his fiance if she is a good lady. And that I want you to see the item incest. See the word incest there? What does it say? What page it is? Incest. Incest. Item number 16. Incest. Page 13. So page 13. So open page 13 of the combat kit. Page 13 of your combat kit. Page 13 of your combat kit. Item number 16. It gives you the definition of incest. A lot of people don't know what incest is. All of you know what is incest? You see, you're going out with somebody else's wife, committing adultery or fornication. In the law of religion, it's a very serious crime. In the law of the Bible, the adulterer and the adulteress must be stoned to death. Very serious. Very serious crime. That's what the Bible says. The Christian world, they don't know that. It's the Holy Bible saying that the adulterer and the adulteress 
must be stoned to death. But no Christian nation on earth, no Christian nation on earth, adultery is a crime. It's not a crime. In any Christian nation on earth, adultery is not a crime. Did you know that? <laughs> you go and finger with somebody else's wife. The police is not going to spy on you to say, that woman is not your wife, so they take you to court. No, you won't do that. Under the Immorality Act, is a white man with a black woman, you go to jail. Black man with a white woman, you go to jail. Am I right? But you with a black man with a black woman, you commit adultery, no jail. White man with a white woman, no jail. Huh? Never mind, that's a law. <laughs> South Africa, that's a law. White man prohibiting with another white man's wife is not a crime. African with African, Indian with Indian, is not a crime. It's only it goes across the color line, it becomes a crime. Pure logic, funny logic. When I had read that, I said, it's very good law. Immorality act. Immorality means immorality. But no, I found as no, it's only across the color line. Black man with black woman, you can keep on begetting bastard children every year. It's not a crime. White man with white woman, it's not a crime. Indian with Indian, not a crime according to the law. According to the law of God, they deserve to die. According to the law of God. If this is your book, if this is your holy Bible, according to your law, the adulterer and the adulteress must be put to death. Now, incest is worse than that. Incest is worse than that. You're going out with somebody else's wife or daughter, outside, outside of marriage, unmarried, it's a good adultery. But you go and sleep with your own mother, have sex with your mother, that's worse. That's worse. With your own daughter? Worse. With your sister? Worse. That's called incest. Now you see, incest is something worse than adultery. Adultery is going out with somebody else's wife or daughter, outside marriage, not married. That's serious. In Islam it's very serious. In the Bible it's very serious. But going and sleeping with your own mother, having sex with your mother, your own mother, your own daughter, your own sister, that's worse. You agree? The Western nations have legalized sodomy, homosexuality. Do you know that? Britain, France, Germany, America, every nation on earth, they legalize sodomy. In Konkoni. In Konkoni. Not Gingi. They have legalized it. But still today, they have not legalized incest. Do you know that? Still, they've got still some sense. They have not legalized incest. You sleep with your mother or with your daughter, they can catch you. So, still, they've got some little sense. South Africa is going to legalize sodomy. Our new, new, <laughs> new world order now. Man, you've got to be one with a white man. The Americans, they allow it. The British allow it, the French allow it, the German allow it. You better than that. You Africans, you better than that. So no, you also follow the line. You're going to legalize it. And you're going to legalize abortion. You know, dropping the child. In America, one million abortions a year are taking place. One million women, they drop the children. Unborn children. One million a year. But the Arab, he chops up somebody's hand for some time. This whole oh, big human guy, now he's a barbarian. You're killing one million children a year. Innocent children, you're not consulting. You didn't consult them. Let me tell you, brother, into the world, made the woman pregnant and you killed the child. One million a year. <laughs> that is not a crime. But for the criminal, you chop off his hands. How? How? These are barbarians. <laughs> we are barbarians. You are, the, you are the civilized. You drop one million children a year. In Italy, the home of the Roman Catholic Church, 100,000 a year. In France, same. In Britain, same. In Germany, same. 100,000, average of 100,000 a year. <laughs> They're aborting the children. Murder, murdering little children, innocent children. But that's not a crime. In South Africa, it also will be legalized. Because you want to be one with a white man. You want to appear, you sound like the American, you sound like the British, like the German. <laughs> That's your, your choice. <laughs> That's your choice. I can't say anything. Right. So incest 
the first item there, you see there, A, you see A, you see A written there? That night, that night, they, meaning both the daughters of Lot, gave him, the father Lot, wine to drink, and the older daughter had intercourse with him. The elder daughter of Lot had intercourse with the father. The next day, the older daughter said to her, his sister, I slept with him last night, we had sex with him. Now let's get him drunk again tonight, and you sleep with him. Then each of us will have a child by our father. Uh -huh. so, they, so that night, they got him drunk, and the younger daughter had intercourse with him. In this way, both of Lot's daughters became pregnant by their father. Father making his daughters pregnant. Both had sons, Ammon and Moab, were born with these two girls. And out of that came the Ammonites and the Moabites. In the Holy Bible, they are a blessed people. God blessed them. God told the Jews when they came out of Egypt, kill the Palestinians, kill the Palestinians. Men, women and children, kill them. Even sucklings, you know, little babies sucking the mother's breast, even are they not to be spared. Don't spare them. Nothing that breathes must live. I'm only reading the Bible to you. This is the God of mercy instructing the Jews. The Palestinians kill them all, men, women, and children. Even suckling, little babies, sucking the mother's breast. They are not to be spared. But the Ammonites and the Moabites not, must not have us. Who are they? They are the children of Lord. Father having sex with his daughters and begetting bastard children children of incest, those children and their family, are <coughs> don't, don't interfere with them, don't harass them, don't meddle with them. What's the logic? What's the logic? Palestinians kill them. That bloody rubbish. Even the little ones, innocent thing, kill them! <coughs> but the Ammonites and the Moabites, you must not have it. Because they are the children of Lord, father having sex with his daughters and producing his bastard children. Because of that, they must be protected. So, on the side of this statement, you put down P15 in big writing. P15 in big writing on the side. In the right blank space. Put down P15 means page 15. Don't worry about that now. Just put down P15. Item B. Item B. Put down P32, P32, <coughs> P32, item B, P32. Item C, item C, put down P35, P35. Item D, item D, put P288, P288. Page 288. Item E, E, E. Put down page 292. P292. P292. In other words, these page numbers I have given you, in your Bible you'll find these stories there. But your Bible at home is a different Bible. No, the page numbers won't be the same. See, every Bible, different publication, different time, different number. The, 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 the reference is the same, but the pages won't be there. So this is for your Bible. Therefore, everybody's given a Bible, so you don't have to start fumbling. In your Bible is something else, and in your Bible, you, where you're going to find it? Have it. So making easy for you, say so the first item is on P15. P15 means page 15 of your Bible, this Bible. Open up page 15 of your Bible. Very near, very near, page 15 of your Bible. Page 15 of your Bible. Page 15. Yes, tell the very beginning. Page 15. 14 and 15. Actually, 14 and 15. Page 14 and 15. Page 14 and 15. That's it. <coughs> right. Now, look at this. These are the production of page 14 and 15. Right across the two pages. Say, are you listening? Right across the two pages, right. Sex between father and daughters. Sex between, right across the two pages. I hope you are listening to me. Right across the two pages. Fill it up. 
easy to find afterwards. When are you looking? Sex between father and daughters. Daughters is plural. That's it. That's it. Sex between father and daughters. Right. 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 Very good. Very good. Very good. <coughs> right. Then you see on page 15, <coughs> verses 30 to 36. Look at this. 30 to 36. Box it. Box it. Frame it. Frame all those verses. 30 to 36. Frame them. Frame them. That's it. 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 Good. 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 Please read it together. Read it together. And a lot and lot went out and dwelt in the mountain and his two daughters with him. For he feared to dwell in Zor. And he dwelt in a cave, he and his two daughters. And the firstborn said unto the younger, Our father is old, and there is not a man in the earth to come in unto us after the manner of all the earth. Come, let us make our father drink wine, and we will lie with him, that we may preserve seed of our father. And they made their father drink wine that night, and the firstborn went in and lay with her father, and he perceived not when she lay down, nor when she arose. And it came to pass on the morrow that the firstborn said unto the younger, Behold, I lay yesternight with my father. Let us make him drink wine this night also, and go thou in and lie with him, that we may preserve seed of our father. And they made their father drink wine that night also. And the younger arose and lay with him, and he perceived not when she lay down, nor when she arose. Thus were both the daughters of Lot with child by their father. Father made the daughters pregnant. It's worse than cooking. Worse than that. Now, we are asking the Christian missionaries, what is the moral of that? What lesson you learn from that? See, we tell our children fairy tales, fables, fox and the grapes. You heard it? Fox and the grapes, the wolf and the lamb, the dog in the shadow. We tell all this fairy tale. These things didn't happen. No fox went and jumped for grapes. Do you know that? No, but we create this story, trying to tell our children, my child, don't be like that greedy fox. When you can't get a thing, you say, sour grapes. That's a moral. You're telling our children, don't be like that greedy dog. It found a bone with the bone in the mouth. He's crossing a wooden bridge across a river. He sees the reflection in the water. He sees another dog with the bone in the mouth. So he's greedy for the other dog's bone. He says, boom! So he lost what he had. Be grateful to God for what God has given you, and God will give you more. Don't be greedy for the other dog's bones. These things didn't happen. But we create this story to teach a child a moral, a lesson. All these fairy tales are moral lessons. What is the moral of this? What lesson you learn? I'm learning a lesson that uh, uh, sin is something that is different from the other one. You're learning there that you see sodomy, men with men. Yes. It's very serious. God killed all the people yes. of Sodom and Gomorrah. Yes. Hmm? Yes. That's a moral. He killed them all. Konkoni and the Dingilis. He killed them all. Sodom and Gomorrah. That's the Bible says that. 
But now father having sex with the daughter and we getting bastard children, God does nothing. <laughs> you go men with men or women with women, the Bible says kill them. But some nation that for the superstition that when the father's says that we will with his daughters, he can get killed children. But here, it didn't tell you that you see the children that were born with cripples, with hair, lip and club foot. God didn't give the children AIDS, syphilis or gonorrhea. He didn't give lot syphilis or gonorrhea. God didn't scold him. He blessed him for having those bastard children. So what's the moral? What's the moral? What do you learn? When you commit homosexuality, God will kill you according to the Bible. Yeah. But you go and sleep with your daughter and make her pregnant, God does nothing. Not one word, not one word of condemnation. Not in any Bible on earth, there's not one word of condemning what God did. Not one word. He didn't get syphilis, he didn't get gonorrhea, he didn't get AIDS, nothing. God didn't scold him, nothing. But he blesses his children. So the moral is, sodomy, homosexuality is bad. But sleeping with your daughters is not so bad. That's a model. And there are people doing it. Child molestation. Fathers having intercourse with their own. Twelve percent of all those guys in the Eddington Hospital, white people who are charged for abusing the children are fathers, actual fathers of the daughters. The eight-year-old and the twelve-year-old. They're having sex with them. They read things like this. You keep on reading things like this in the book of God. So God didn't say anything. God didn't do anything. Can't be so bad. That's what you learn. The type of stories you read create the type of mentality that you have. Right. At the bottom of these two pages, write down, at the bottom of the two pages, write down in big writing, son rapes his mother. Son rapes his mother. Son rapes his mother now. This was daughter seducing the father now the son is going to rape his mother son rapes his mother son rapes his mother you know what's rape? yes P32 put down P32 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 and open slowly find P32 8 32 Slowly, not too far. P32. 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 It's page 32 and 33. On the top you'll find 33. 32 and 33. That's it. Right across the two pages. See, right across the two pages. Right across the two pages. Right. Son rapes his mother. Therefore, I said you must be able to write. Son rapes his mother. Son rapes his mother. Son rapes his mother. <coughs> and on page 32, you'll find verse 22. On page 32, you'll find verse 22. I want you to box it, frame it. Just frame that verse, that's all. Frame verse 22. Very short verse. Very short verse. Just frame it, box it. What's the moral? What do you learn from that? It's not the same. And the, man, the father is told, you know, I'm telling you, the father is 80 year old. Cripple, cripple. And you tell him that his son was having sex with his wife. He's gonna blow his top. <laughs> he, he might have heart attack. He'll lose his temper. <laughs> he does things like that. But Israel, <laughs> the jailer, he's big hearted man. It doesn't change him at all. Nothing, nothing, nothing. Yes. And David. His father's concubine. Right. Concubine does not mean wife. Right. Right. What does it mean? I think it means prostitute. Astaghfirullah. The Bible says, And Abraham, and he went and took his wife for Sarah and Hagar, 
who is a Sarah and Hajra. And then he had a third wife called Katura. See, and he took a concubine, Katura. His concubine is committing adultery with her. So on, the wives. He had 700 wives and 300 concubines. Was he committing adultery with those concubines? Solomon, the wise, 300 women committing adultery with 300? No. In the Bible, the word concubine and wife are synonymous terms. They mean the same thing. And that you will find in your combat kit and the K, Keturah. No, no, no. And the K, Keturah. You'll find the two references from the Bible. One place it says, Keturah, the third wife of Abraham. Another place in the Bible says, Keturah, the concubine of Abraham. Now, if it's a contradiction, there's a contradiction in the Bible. This God didn't know the difference. He's telling one guy to write down that Keturah was his wife. And he tells another guy to write down that it was his concubine. If that means different things, then that is an extra contradiction in the Bible. Bible. Every Bible has that. Keturah as a wife and Keturah as a concubine. Does it mean the same thing? He said, no. And then that's God of yours. He didn't know what he was talking. He's telling one guy to write that she was his concubine and telling the other guy that she was his wife. This God didn't know. Your God didn't know what the concubine means. The rank of your wife is already the same. It's like a second wife. Yeah. Or a third wife. Yeah. Right? But now, she is your father's wife. Is your mother. Your father's wife. What is she to you? Your father's wife. What is she to you? She is my mother. Your mother! Your father's wife is your? Mother. Mother. No money for a stepmother, second mother. Your father's wife is your mother. Then you go and have sex with her? No. Finish. Finish. And this guy is told, the father said, people when they told him, he says, your son was having sex with your wife. Quiet. Just start having me. Man is happy. There's nobody caring for him. Stop. Book of God. <laughs> yeah, I'm asking, is this God talking? Is this God talking? This is a God's book. Can you read this to your daughter all this? To your sister? You can't. You can't. <laughs> you hold that God. If God was not ashamed to put all this in his book, then why are you ashamed to read it? That means you are more holy than God. <laughs> Can you be holy than God? Can. You can, but you are. Every Christian is holier than God. Because you won't read this in the church. Um, why not? Because it's too filthy dirty. So if God can speak this, why can't you speak it? That's what I'm saying. Is this book written in the, in the people of, the, of, of today? This is today's language. I mean, I mean the, the people that, who, are, who are living today. This, the of the past. this is what the Christians are doing. They've got it down your throat. You see, the Zulus are converted to this, and the Tarsas, and the Chanas, and the whole background of you are converted. And the Makalat, and the India. Huh? This is your book. Book of God. I, we are only questioning can this be God's word? That's all. Our question is can this be God talking? Right. At the bottom of these two pages, write down. Father-in-law, so sex between father-in-law and daughter-in-law. Sex between father-in-law and daughter-in-law. Sex between father-in-law at the bottom. Across the two pages. Use the book. Use both the pages at the bottom. Sex between father-in-law and daughter-in-law. Sex between father-in-law and daughter-in-law. Sex between father-in-law and daughter-in-law. And put down P35. Means page 35. P35. This next page you turn, you turn to page 35. Very easy to find. Very easy. This book is full of incest. By God. This is full of incest. This is just a starter. Just give me the taste of it. Full of incest. Page 35. Open page 35. Open page 35. Page 35. And right on the top, right across the two pages, sex between father-in-law and daughter-in-law. Sex between father-in-law and daughter-in-law. Incest again. 
father in law now doing to his daughter in law. Father in law doing to his daughter in law now. Son did it to his mother, father did it to his daughters, now father in law going to do it to his daughter in law. Daughter in law. What is the Malugasa? Malugasa? Makor. 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 Kadang Fahad Gawai. Kadang Fahad Gawai. Makor. Yeah, Makor. Right, so on page 35, you will find verses 15 to 18. On page 35, 15 to 18, frame them, frame them. Say it like this, frame those verses 15 to 18. Frame them, box them, box them up. Box them up. Box them up. Box them up. Right. Verse 15, I'm reading. When Judah saw her, he thought her to be a harlot. What is a harlot? What is a harlot? Yes, a whore, harlot, a whore, a prostitute, all these words you can use. He thought this woman was a harlot because she had covered her face. And he turned unto her by the way and said, Go to, I pray thee, I'm begging you, let me come in unto you, unto thee, means let me have sex with you. Hmm? His father in law is talking to his daughter in law. Now you see the words there, for he knew not that she was his daughter in law. You see those words there? They are written in brackets. Yes. You see the brackets there? Now you ask the Christian missionary, what are the brackets doing there? Did Moses know about brackets? Huh? Does God know about brackets? Your God, does he tell you, hey, put this in brackets? Did he tell you that, put it in brackets? <laughs> the words in brackets, what does it mean? What do they mean? These are the words of the editor. These are not the words of God. They are telling you in clear language that this is not God's word. You want to help that poor fellow Judah, maybe he knew that she was his daughter-in-law. But you want to exonerate him. You want to excuse him. So you put the words in brackets, but he knew not. Why the words are in brackets? For he knew not. No, no. Because you want to cover up the man. God didn't do that. God didn't dictate that. You ask any Christian missionary, what are the brackets, words in brackets doing in the Bible? What do they mean? Did God put it in brackets? He said, no. Then why did they put it in brackets? This is the God who's translating. He is trying to help you, not God. These are the translator's words. Maybe he knew that she was his daughter-in-law. So, and, he, and she said, uh, I, I thought he knew not. And she said, What will thou give me that thou mayest come in unto me? Means have sex with me. What will you give me? Teach me your daughter's prostitution. When somebody says, Come, 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 go there. Move us. Come. So, what does that mean, sir? Say, I'll ask her. You know, come, come. So, so give her me. So, give me one rat. So, can you make it five? Mm -hmm. Teach me your daughter's prostitution in the book of God. So, what will you give me? Not say, for fact, God will put you in hell. You go to hell. No, 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 no. So what will you give me? So give honey. So give honey. So he'll give you a kid from the flock, a goat kid. You know, baby goat. You know why? Because they didn't carry cash. They didn't have credit cards. You know that? Huh? So you got to send you a baby goat. So she said, what guarantee are you going to send it? Do you enjoy me? Have sex and you go away and you don't send it? So what guarantee you want? For him, Tembi, you saw. Pledge, Tembi, you saw. So what pledge do you want? He said, your signet, your ring, and your bracelet, there's to wear bangles. 3,000 years ago, the Jews used to wear bangles. Also, men, men, men. And their staff, the rod of Moses, which is in your hand. So the old man gave it to her and had sex with his daughter-in-law by the roadside and made her pregnant. Twins, one hit, twins. 
You read the whole chapter, two of his sons failed with the same woman. Two sons. You read the chapter 13. It's a spicious chapter in the whole Bible. Two sons. Er, Onan, and Shelah. He had three sons. Er, he got married, got him married to a woman called Tamar, and something that he did that God didn't like, God killed him. So he tells the second son, Onan, he said, you go in unto your brother's wife and have sex with her so that she may have a child, so the name of the deceased can carry on. The Jews were very particular that the name carries on. Other the name perishes. So according to the custom, Onan, it's all in chapter 30, at home was reading. While he's having sex, and he's about to ejaculate, the thought occurs to him that the seed is mine, but my brother is going to get the credit. So he spills it on the ground. So, 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 so. This is what the Bible says. And he spilled his seed on the ground. So God killed him for that. God killed him for spilling, fertilizing the ground. But the father-in-law fertilizes his daughter-in-law. God blesses him. Now look, twins are born. And these twins, Fares and Zara, are the great-grandfathers of the Christian God, Jesus. Gospel of Matthew, chapter 1, verse 3. It says, And Fare and Judah beget Fares and Zara of Tamar. Who is Judah? Father-in-law. Who is Tamar? Daughter-in-law. And this having sex by the roadside, creating these bastard children, Fares and Zara are the great-grandfathers of your God, Jesus. Your God, Jesus! His great-grandfathers are these bastard children, children of incest. That is great-grandfathers. So God honors you. He honors the guy. When the guy spills it on the ground, God kills him. Very serious. Huh? Tit up here. God kills him for that. But he tit up, Pagadigalum, Dodagaziyake. God blesses him to make him the great grandfather of Jesus Christ. No, no, it's your Bible, man. Tell me what is the moral of that. What lesson you learn from that? Come, come. Word of God. This is God's word. God tell you all this story? Tell that there's no relationship. There's no relationship. Man is blessed. He's blessed. Man is blessed. If you become the great grandfather of Shaka, you're happy, no? If you are the great grandfather of Shaka of Dingan, what do you say? No, 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 Immoral. If there's no moral, it's immoral. If there's no moral you run, morality, then it's immoral. I'm telling you pornography for the sake of pornography. Right. At the bottom of these two pages, bottom of the two pages, write down brother rapes sister. Brother rapes sister. Brother rapes his sister now. Brother rapes sister. Yes. While you were explaining this uh, verse uh, 15 to yeah. 18. Ah, 15 to 18, yeah. Yeah. We are supposed to I, frame I, it. Yeah, I framed it all. Right. 15 to 18, yeah. So I happen to have a little bit, read a little bit further. Uh -huh. And there I see one word hmm? that, uh, as you said, that uh, it was put in the brackets but that uh, Judah didn't know that uh, that woman was uh, his daughter. That he may, he, may, he knew. Uh -huh. Uh, because no, he didn't know. This is the translator is telling you that perhaps he didn't know. I would also imagine so that he did not know. Right. And uh, because that woman was wearing a veil. Right. And later on, right. he sent men to fetch that woman. Right. So it, it dawned to him that it was uh, it was his daughter-in-law who played the harlot. No, no, he became a late stage, very late stage. Yeah, a few right. months later. Right, 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 right. But so what I'm trying to say is this that regardless of the point that whether he knew that it was his daughter-in-law <coughs> right. Christianity is trying to justify uh, this uh, extramarital sex that means this is it's an innocent thing you see a woman by the yeah, side hey, and you can let, let, let me have sex with you he says she said what will you give me come and it's then, a business Bye. when Judah comes to know that it was his brother uh, daughter-in-law then he orders her to be punished now righteous indignation 
and he said she was more righteous than I. Right? And he knew he had no more intercourse with her. Only one intercourse he had with her. We don't really enter into all that. The fact is, in the book of God, yes. Trying this, to justify this, things no, no, like this, this the there's not one word of condemnation. His son, Onan, he spills the seed on the ground, same chapter, you read before that. God kills him for spilling the seed on the ground, fertilizing on the ground, God kills him. But fertilizing his daughter in law, God blesses him. So what is the lesson you learn? Fertilizing his daughter in law and be getting bastard children back from her. He is blessed the fellow, becoming the great grandfather of Jesus Christ. You are God! What's the matter? Which is something very amazing. Uh, up till now, the, the that is you ask them. No, this is what I am trying to ask you. No, no, I ask Has you. it, no, has it you ever occurred to them that yes. uh, total... Uh, no, you total see, you get, infatu things. you get infatuated. You know, if your wife is the biggest whore in dirt, you know, but to you, she is an angel. Right? You are right. You know, suppose she was reputed to be the biggest whore in Durban, biggest harlot in Durban, but you fell in love with her, and your father tells you, your mother tells you, the whole world tells you that this woman, <laughs> but you have fallen in love with her. You see, and once you fall in love, the love is blind. So, the thing is, moral of it. We are asking for the moral. In the book of God, father-in-law having sex with his daughter-in-law. What did God say to that? Nothing. Did God punish him? Did he scold him? Nothing. But he blesses him to become the great grandfather of his own son. God's own son Jesus, who is the great grandfather of him? This guy Judah. And Fares and Zara, these bastard children, children princes, are his great grandfathers. So what is the moral? We are asking, what is the moral? No moral, then it's immoral. If there's no moral, then it's immoral. Book of God, that's what the Muslim is trying to say. If this is not the God's word, this is not God's word. That's what the Muslim is trying to say. You don't have to accept my word. You have your own opinion. You still say it's the word of God, that's your business. But the Muslim said, this is not God's word. How can you do this to your daughter? You did this to your daughter, stories like to your sister? Huh? About the guy going by the roadside and he sees this woman and he wants to have sex with her. And she, he says, allow me to sleep with you. So what will you give me is a gipani. Teaching your daughters to do prostitution. Who's a gipani? What will you give me? What are you teaching her? Whatever you read, it's programming you, brainwashing you. Right. So at the bottom you put down brother, rage, sister. You got that? P288. P288. Open up page 288. 288. Open up page 288. Page 288. Page 288. 288. Got it? Right across the two pages, right? Brother rapes sister. Brother rapes sister. Right across the two pages. Brother rapes sister. Now, chapter 13. You see chapter 13 there? Verses. Look at this. Five. Look at verse 5 downwards. Frame it all. 5 downwards. Frame it all. Look at my look at my book. 5 verse 5 downwards. Frame it all. Box it all. 5 downwards. Frame it all. On the next column, 14 upwards. Frame it all, 14 upwards, next column, 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 yeah, next column, yeah. same page, next column, 14 upwards, frame it all, that's it, 14 upwards, 14 upwards, that's it, very good, now, this class of mine, I have really very, 14 upwards, frame it all, frame it all, frame it all, frame it all. Right. 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 Right.
Very good. Very good. Very good. Right. Now here is a story about a brother falling in love with his sister. Amnon, Amnon, one of the sons of David. David, a man of God, a God, man after God's own heart, the Bible says. David, the prophet, he is a man after God's own heart. From his palace roof, he sees a woman having a bath naked in a tub. Bathsheba. Mm. And he falls in love with her. I saw this, I saw this one about 20 years ago or more. David and Bathsheba in the film. And they show you from the palace roof, David is seeing a woman, you know, on a distant roof, absolutely naked. Beauty, beauty, beauty. You know, I don't know how they chose where they found this woman from. <laughs> it intoxicated David. <coughs> that woman! So, he sends his minister, go and fetch her. And he commits adultery with her, makes her pregnant. Somebody else's wife. And he gets a husband murdered! He's a murderer and an adulterer. A man after God's own heart. In Islam, we say every prophet of God is sinless. Every prophet is sinless! When I want the staff, I look for the guy who is the most immaculate, the best, the most honest guy that I can get for any work, even a tea boy. Hmm? God Almighty chooses his representative, his mouthpiece, adulterers, murderers, rapists, incestuous people. Is that what he chooses? Huh? He's got no choice. Poor God. Now, the father did that. He had Bathsheba's husband murdered. Uriah. And he committed adultery with her, made her a bastard child. Her, his son now, Amnon, he falls in love with the sister. He loves his sister. He wants to have sex with his sister. So he's telling his friend Jonadab, he say, hey, I love my sister. I'm going to have sex with her, but I don't know how to get to her. It's very easy, very easy. The whole story, what you're afraid, he tells you the whole story. He said, look, you just feign sickness. Pretend that you're sick. So when your father visits you, so some son. So, oh, daddy, I'm dying. <laughs> you know, I like to eat that cookie. You know, what my sister makes. You know, she makes very nice cookies. Dumbor. That's good dumbor. She makes you. Know. <laughs> sister. I want my sister to make it in front of me, and I want her to come and feed me with her hands. So the father goes and tells his daughter, isn't it? Tamara, Tamara, another girl. Go, make those cookies for your brother. So the poor thing comes along in good faith and she makes the cookies. The brother is sleeping and watching. When it's about ready, he's a prince. He's telling every worker, every servant must get out of the house. Out, everybody. He's a prince. Everybody goes out. Then this poor sister comes along with the cookies to feed her ailing, sick brother. And this guy, quickly he gets out of bed. He locks the door and says, come on, my sister, come, sleep with me. So the sister says, brother, this thing is not done in Israel. We don't do things like that. If you want, tell the father. He'll allow you to marry me. Maybe in those days, they were allowed to marry sisters. We're not against that. We're not fighting about that. But the brother, he has got no patience. So he's stronger than her, the Bible says. So he raped her. His sister, he raped his sister. Father did it. Son does that. Mm -hmm. But this is that doesn't end there. Father like son is a thing that can so according to the Bible. It's a father like son. Uh -huh. Son like the father. At the bottom I want you to put down. Son at the bottom. Son rapes his mothers. Shh, wholesale, wholesale. Son is not gonna rape his mothers wholesale. Not one, not two, not three, not five, not seven. Wholesale! You know what's wholesale? You can even know wholesale every day. Huh? You can do wholesale business, anybody? Wholesale. You know wholesale? At the desert. You buy things by the desert. Hmm? Page 292. P292. 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 There's a few pages away. Mm -hmm. And find that page. 292 and write down son rapes his mothers son rapes his mothers son rapes his mothers plural plural not one two three 
not six, seven, eight. Ten in a row. Ten of his mothers in a row. <laughs> ten in a row he does it. One guy, one time he does ten in a row. Son of David, that guy, get stunned. Right. On page 292, you see verse 22. Verse 22. Just frame it. Very small verse. 2, 2, 22. Verse 22. Frame it. Box it. Verse 22. On page 292. On page 292. That's right. Just frame it. Another son of David. This is another son of David. <laughs> Absalom. Absalom is his name. Verse 22. So they spread Absalom a tent upon the top of the house. Actually, the other Bible says on the palace roof. On the palace roof. And Absalom went in unto his father's concubines in the sight of all Israel. You see, in a small town like Bethlehem, of Jerusalem in those days. The king's palace, two story high, not ten story high. Not like this, these buildings we see. No, 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 two story high, the palace. On the palace roof, they're putting up a tent. And the whole town says, hey, 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 look at that. They're putting up a tent on the roof. A flat roof, flat roof. They're putting up a tent. The whole town wants to say, hey, they're putting up a tent on the roof, man. Look, 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 they're putting up a tent on the roof. That's, that's news. That's a sight to be seen. You put your tent on the roof, and you say, hey, women are gathering. Women are gathering. They fill up the whole roof, and they are sleeping one by one. They are all going to sleep. And one guy goes under AK-47. AK-47 is it? Ten of his fathers. Zing, 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 zing. He drew them all in the sight of all Israel. When the whole world could see, he doesn't care a damn. Ten of his father's wives. Ten of his father's wives, he went in AK-47, all of them. What did the father do? Nothing. What did God say? Nothing. I'm asking these Westerners, you see that 10 guys going and having, raping one woman, they call it gang rape. Gang raping one woman. 10 guys raping one woman is called gang rape. One guy doing to 10 women, what do you call that in your language? Huh? One guy doing to 10, 10 of his mothers, what do you call that? If 10 men read to one woman, it's a gang rape. One man read to 10 women, what do you call that? No, I'm asking them, they can't give me an answer. I said, how would you tell me in your language? 10 guys doing to one woman, is a gang rape. But one man does it to 10 women, what do you call that? One rape. So, you see, this is what the Muslims say. This, this is just a sample I gave you. This book is full of great murder Great it's not befitting the book of God. But the Christian wants us to have it as the book of God. Any questions so far? Any questions? Before we go into the next section, and we'll end with the next section. Any questions? Any questions? Yes. Are you finished off with this? Yes. Samson's wife, where he slept for a heart attack. Right. That's, it's all there. It's all right. You'll find that combat in the combat kit. Because when I ask Chris, you like to say, just wait for the rest. The Bible says now. Get another Bible. It says, Samson went to Gaza and he saw a harlot and he went and slept with her. Huh? You see a harlot, a whore, a prostitute, damn it all in the whole city of Gaza. That's the only place where you get to go and sleep with a harlot. What are you going to sleep with a harlot for what? Huh? To come to a head. What do you do with a harlot? He says, man, you have converted. And Lot went and slept with his daughters. What did they do? Reuben went and slept with his mother. What did he do? Huh? He was a five-year-old child sleeping with his mother, stepmother. Is that what it means? Then why should they tell you this, right? That your son, that three-year-old, you know, five-year-old was sleeping with his mother. Huh? Why would the people go and tell him? I want to find out that uh, I remember when Julia Kreshi, you know, Adam and Eve, 
podcast, Adam, for, for, for doing this uh, with, the, with, the, with, the, with the Eve. Why was it the same then? Because now you can allow everything to happen this way. No, 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 no. You see, that's a different story altogether. <laughs> this is, you must ask the Christian priest. You're a priest, man. Yes. You're a man. Yes. God! You ask your father, Christian father. <laughs> he must answer all that. <laughs> we are saying that this is not the book of God. Word of God is here in the book. Word of the prophet is here in the book. Word of the historian is here in the book. But what I'm showing you, this is not God's word. That's all. Because if you are not prepared to read it to your mother or your sister or your daughter, then it can't be God's word. There will be no family. Huh? <laughs> so the next section we go to, we go again to combat kit. And I want you to open up page 8 of combat kit. Page 8 of Combat Kit. Page 8 of Combat Kit. See item 10. What is item 10? God. God. Qualities ill befitting. God. Qualities that don't fit. God. See in every religion, any religion, to value your religion, to value my religion, we must find out what is your concept of God. If you think your body is like a monkey, you're going to have monkey brains. You know that. If you think your body is like an elephant, you're going to have elephant brains. If you think your body is like a totem pole, a trunk of a tree, that's your mentality. Your concept of God tells you the value of your religion. The Zulu are asking him, Umvelinda. What is Umvelinda? This Umvelinda, he didn't do it. So he tells me, as I was Umnimza, Uyana, Umwe, Agazali and Afudi Agazalanga, Futi Abu Kurutu Lufanai. That's your concept. This is great. The noblest concept of God. He's telling me, Sir, he says, God is a spirit. He does not beget and is not begotten. He's got no father and he's got no sons. And there's nothing like him to him. Nothing like him. I said, That is the true concept of God. The Zulus had it. Khoras had it, the Chwanas had it, every African tribe out of the Zambezi, that is the concept. God is a spiritual being, beyond the imagination of the mind of man. He's not like a man, he's not like a monkey, he's not like an elephant, he's not like a snake, he's not like anything we can think or imagine. Anything we think or imagine is not him. That is Islam, that is the religion of your fathers, not yours. Today, today, your Jesus Christ is your God. You see? religion of your fathers, same, Islam, same. Right, so the concept of God. You see here the first item, A, it speaks about that hissing God. But now A, you see A, I want you to take out an arrow coming out to the left, an arrow, take it as high as possible, take it as high as possible, the arrow from A to the left, and put down 612, 614, 810. Put down. The arrow goes right up. 612, 612, 614, and 810. Put down these three numbers. On the left. On the left. Use that book. Use that book. 612-614-810. All these places, it speaks about God, that God is a hissing God. Who hisses? Huh? Snake, yes. The dogs bark, the cows moo. Huh? Who hisses? The lions roar, the lions roar. Who hisses? Snakes. Does it fit God? He's calling for the fly from Australia. So he says, is that what God does? Huh? Three places in the Bible. He's a hissing God. He's a hissing God. He's a hissing God. This God, he hisses. There's a call, he says, I was here at a country place called as -Salam, outside of Zinjo. And I kept dogs, dogs, cows, sheep, goats, chickens, uh, bucks. Everything I had to name. My God. When I wanted to call my dogs, I said, 
Rusty Pluto, Rusty, Rusty Pluto. Shh. And the dogs ran. The dogs ran. I call my cows. Oh, patat, patat. And, and the cow knows. And I said, that is, we're going to get food. He runs and comes. I call my chickens. Kip, 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 kip. Shh. All the chickens and the ducks, they run and come. I had bucks, bucks. You know bucks in, in Koya, huh? Nyamasa. So I said, bonzi, 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 bonzi. And the bucks run and come. I trained them. So I, with that name, food. With that name, food. With that name, food. So when I want to call my dog, what have I called them? I said, rusty, rusty. They know. That's their name. The chickens don't come. The bucks don't come. Nothing comes. And I say, rusty, Pluto, rusty. They know that sound means food. So the dogs come, run and come. But imagine me calling my dogs. <laughs> you come to visit me. What's wrong, Uncle? I'm calling my dog. Uncle, you're behaving like a bloody dog. You behave like that, you're a bloody dog, man. Huh? Calling my boo 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 boo. You're gonna laugh. No. Uncle, you know. No, the chicken. What I'm gonna do with the chicken? What I'm gonna do? Right. But God Almighty, mm -hmm. the merciful God, when he wants to call his sisters, then B, 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 I want you to circle B. I want you to circle B. Frame it, box it like this, and have an arrow coming out to the right, as high as possible, as high as possible, and put down six, three, eight, six, seven, eight. Six three eight six seven eight. Six three eight six seven eight. These two places, the references are given there. You see, in your spare time, I want you to check out these pages and frame them, box them at home, these verses. Here, God is a roaring God. He roars like a lion. He hisses like a snake. Now he roars like a lion. He wants to frighten you. God, he rolls like a lion. He hisses like a snake. And now he rolls like a lion. Right. Next one. B, C, C, C. An arrow coming out. Put down 614. E, I'm sorry. C, C, 614. C, 614. 614. Then you read there that God is a father God. Yagunda. He says, God says, I will shave the hair on your heads and your beards and the hair on your legs. God. With a higher razor, not his own. This poor God hasn't got a razor of his own. This Jehovah, he hasn't got a razor of his own. With a higher razor, he's going to shave the hair on your heads and he's going to shave your beards off. And he's going to shave the hair on your legs. I'm asking how high will he come? Come, come back. Later, nicely. Instead of buying the wheat. You know the woman who used wheat? What else? Near. Removing the hair. You know? This God is going to do it for me, man. And the hair on your legs. That's how high does he go? Come, come, man. Clean it up. Do a good job. God doing that. Huh? You're God that. Because of Gunda, he cannot shave it. He's going to shave it off. And your beard and the hair on your legs also. He's going to shave it. You people are using Lula, huh? Lula. You use Lula for removing the hair. That white poem is strong. Uh -huh. But God will do it for you. He's going to shave your hair of your legs as well. Right. D, 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 D. I'm sorry, huh? D. Frame D. Frame D, frame it, an arrow coming up to the right, put down 5, comma, and 669. 5 means this, you'll find that reference on page 5 and on page 669. 5 and 669. 5 and 669. <coughs> this shows that God is penitent. He's sorry for what he has done. You know, he made man, he didn't know what he was making. This man is a monster he was creating. Adam and Eve, a monster, Frankenstein monster. Because he made this man, 
and he didn't know he's, he's going to disobey. And once he disobeys, they're going to kick him out. When he's going to kick him out, but he's had the, the potentiality of procreating, and he's going to multiply. Today we have five billion Adams and Eves on Earth. You know that? One Adam and Eve, today we have five billion, five and a half billion, five thousand million Adams and Eves. He made it that way. He kicked out Adam, and the guy started having sex. Adam and Eve. And started producing, 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 producing. Today, we are five and a half billion, five and a half thousand million people on earth, all Adams and Eve. And because of that, disobedience, sin entered the world. And there's no way of removing the sin, except that God himself must come down to earth. He must go and stay in the woman's womb for nine months, Mary's womb for nine months, eat the menses. That's what every human child is fed of, through this unbelievable cause. The woman stops menstruating. What does it happen? That blood goes in to feed the child. This is what the food of God walks in his mother's womb, in his mother's stomach. And at the age of, after nine months, he comes out with all the filth and the muck, which made his mother impure for nine, for 40 days. This God coming into the world, he had to stay there for nine months in his mother's womb. For all that, for making Adam and Eve. And at the age of, and they were circumcised. I'm asking you, know what is circumcision? You guys know? Who saw? Huh? Can you imagine God getting circumcised? Somebody holding God with by his little tool, losing the skin. Can you imagine your God getting circumcised? Your God that circumcised on the eighth day. And at the age of 30 we get it crucified. For your sins. Poor oh God. <laughs> so he's penitent. He's sorry for his making man. He didn't know what he was making, man. This God, he was such a fool, he didn't know what he was making. And he didn't know that this guy is going to disobey. And if he's going to disobey, he's going to kick him out. He didn't know all that. So he's penitent. He's regretting that he made that. Got that? Not my God. E, E, E. Arrow to the left, put 299, 299, 299, 299. It speaks about God riding a cherub. Cherub. C-H-E-R-U-B. Cherub. Anybody tell me what is a cherub, I give you this book. Anybody tells me what is a cherub, I give you this book. Cherub. C-H-E-R-U-B. Cherub. 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 Link to mythology, I think. Cherub. Angel. What kind? What kind of angel? Cherub. Messenger. Huh? A messenger. What kind of messenger? Cherub. Baby angel. Baby angel. You see an angel in Western art. You go to the museum, art gallery, you'll find some beautiful paintings. Beautiful paintings. You'll find a beautiful woman with wings. You know, well developed. 36, 24, 36, you know, well proportioned. But when you look at that, she's an angel, but she looks like a mature woman, 25, 30 year old. A cherub is a 12 year old girl. 12 year, you know, just little young thing. Young thing. 10 year old is a cherub. It's an angel, but 10 year old, 12 year old, yeah, yeah crisp, crisp thing. And God Almighty, He writes. He wants to go to Johannesburg. So He gets into one of these. Johannesburg. He wants to go to Bombay. He writes cherubs, cherubs, the Bible says. He's writing cherubs. Little girls, little girls. I'm asking, how does He write on them? On their backs or on the stomachs? Huh? You have seen this Superman, you know, the way he flies. He does this like that. <laughs> he doesn't fly like that on his back. He flies like this. So now the angel is flying. How? Is he sitting on the back of the angel? Does he put the rain in the mouth? Or what does he do? He holds her. He doesn't fall off. Huh? Because you can slip off. The angel is going to take a turn. A <laughs> sharp turn. <laughs> Can you imagine God riding little girls? This is the book. He's riding cherubs, little girls. Ten-year-old girls, angels, ten-year-old. Not the full-grown thing. Twenty-five-year-old, thirty-year-old thing. Mature, no, no, no. Christian little things, he writes them. I don't know what it means, but that's what the book says. His means of transport is cherubs, little girls. You open any dictionary, it will tell you these are crisp young things, angels. Young things. 
angel macam cir <coughs> yang that's kerja okay, chicken 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 angel. Alright. Ah, uh, this is the last one here. F circle F circle F and have an arrow coming up to the right and put down two five two two five two two five two. You see the Christians say that the God of Islam is a merciless God. He is a bloodthirsty God in Islam. The murderer, if he is convicted, he is get rid of him. Quick, quick. Get rid of him. A rapist, get rid of him. Kill him! The man has done some crime, 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 uh, highway robbery, he said chop off his hand. Chop off his hand. Very cruel. Very harsh. The law of Islam is very harsh, very cruel. They say our God is a merciful God. He's a compassionate God. He's a loving Father in heaven. You heard that? Yeah. Yes. God of Christianity is a loving Father, not of Islam. Islam says, you did this wrong, you deserve punishment. You deserve your head to be chopped off, chopped off. You deserve to be stoned, stoned him. Whether they do it or not, that's a law. The Muslims say, this is our law. Christians say, no, our is a kind, merciful father. Right, he is. So let's see what your book says. A God, he murders 50,070 persons for looking into a box. God Almighty, he kills 50,000. You know what's 50,000? You know what's 50,000? And 70 persons for looking into a box. He's a merciful God. He's a loving father. He's telling you, he said, look, don't look into the box. And you made a mistake. But he's patient. He allows you, like me, mm, there's a box there in the doorway. And I warn you people. I said, look, anybody looking into the box, I'll have his head chopped off. Now that's my warning. And I'm serious. I'm the old fashioned king tyrant. Right? Nobody looks in. When you go out, just go out, walk out, straight, look straight forward and go out. Don't look into the box. You understand? <coughs> right. Class, dismiss. The first person who looks into the box, say, hey! <laughs> Sir, sorry, please forgive me. No, I thought, mm, I can't forgive you. You remember I told you? I'll chop off your head. I must chop off your head. I can't forgive. God said, was being merciful, kind, compassionate. He knows he's made us weak. We are apt to forget. But he said, no, I can't forget. So by chopping off that one guy's head, you're saving 50,069 people. You know that? None of, them, none of you will ever look into the box. If I chop off one guy's head, I should be kind and merciful. Forgive me. I know my creatures, they were weak. They made a mistake before. I said, look, look out now. Look, next guy. You know, I'll really chop off your head, eh? i let this guy go. You made a mistake. None of you will ever do this. Am I right? Yes. But this God is a, he's a, he's, he's a patient God. He allows 50,000. Wow! He's waiting, he's waiting. He's not, he's wondering. The whole bang of the past is kill them all. <laughs> Two, ten, hundred, thousand, ten thousand, twenty thousand, thirty thousand, forty thousand, fifty thousand, one. Then I kill the whole lot. Hmm? <coughs> I'm very kind. I'm very kind. I'm very merciful. I'm very compassionate. Huh? I widowed 50,000 women. I often 100,000 children. I'm very kind. I'm very merciful. And made it happen in Bin Sheba. Bin Sheba is a small village, man. It's a small village. Where do you get in 50,070 people to look into a box? Huh? Wait, wait. To get 50,070 people to look into a box in the church? 50, you know, you have to walk by single file. You'll take a bloody week for 50,000 people to look into a box. 50,070, you know, you'll take a week. For, you pass by. Next one. Next one. 50,070. But God is patient. He can wait. And He waited. Can you believe it? God doing that. Killing 50,070 persons for looking <coughs> in a small village called Beersheba. <coughs> Where did you get 50,000 people, huh? 
in Big Shiva. They will be putting the people there on a box. How can 50,000 people go see in their house? This is the Holy Bible said. For that reason, and the book tells you so many more. I want you to read in your spare time at home. You read it and check out these references and mark them. Mark them. It will qualify you to become a black belt expert of comparative religion. Kung Fu expert of comparative religion. That little book there, there isn't a Christian born who can stand before you. There isn't a Christian born bishop or pope who can stand before you once you master this little book. Right? The Christians said, look familiar, right, your son. These are all that you have to face when you visit the Muslim house. You see, your God is a merciful God, huh? He's a kind God, huh? He's very compassionate, huh? He goes and kills 50,000, 70 people for looking into a box. What was so wonderful in the box? Man? Was he sitting there inside there? Was your God sitting there inside? What was he doing there inside? Such a terrible crime that he kills 50,000, 70 people. So, so for this reason, you Muslims we say, but this is not the book of God. Now, I am open to questions. Any question, even criticism. My son. I just want to know who wrote the Bible. <laughs> now, <laughs> one thing we are sure that God didn't write it. That's all. <laughs> they, say, they say there are 40 different people got together, not they didn't get together, at different times, 40 different persons. They say the first five books, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy, Moses is supposed to have written it. Joshua, book of Joshua, Joshua is supposed to have written it. And the book of Samuel, Samuel is supposed to have written it. And the book of Kings, so and so is supposed to, they got 40, Matthew, supposed to have written Matthew, Mark wrote Mark, Luke wrote Luke, John wrote John, and so on. They have 40 different people writing at different times, and they got all these things together, and they put it together, and they call it the Holy Bible. Holy Bi Bible means a book. It comes from the Greek word Biblos. Biblos means a book. That's all. It means a book. So all what they had, they put it together. See, anything that was written in Hebrew was sacred. Anything that was written in Greek of those days is sacred. So whatever they had, they put it together into a book. Anything, the love stories, the pornography, the jealousies, everything is inside. Yes. Since there's a conflict among the, the religion, which is the right way to approach? The approach is fear God and keep his commandments. That's what the Bible says. Fear God and keep his commandments. For this is the whole duty of man. All these other fanciful fairy tales, leave them one side. Your forefathers had the right religion. Your ancestors, you had the right religion. Your fathers, before the white men came here, they knew Ugu Pinga into AMP, adultery, was evil. Uchoncha into AMP. Kuluamanga into AMP. Mbulala into You knew the Ten Commandments, man. Yes. What did the white man teach you? What did he teach you? No, today to go and dance with other people's wives and daughters. Your fathers didn't do that. You were not allowed to hold somebody else's wife. <laughs> Huh? Yeah. You have Shwanipa? Yes. Is there Shwanipa anymore? No. No. You are a Christian now. With a Bible under your arm, you go to church, and you come out, you see the little girl, you want to feel her breath. Unjani <laughs> Amtanam. Huh? Amtanam. <laughs> yeah, this, this is, you, you qualify. You qualify. <laughs> yes, my son. The initial compilation, if I may call it, you know, the 40 different authors to the different beds. To the present state that this is, is there any change? Uh, I would imagine that you have studied in detail, therefore I'm posing the question to you. Uh, is there anything that is left out from this compilation? There's a change by the minute. This is the King James Version. This version has gone through five major revisions. You know, it's major. Your father's last will and testament. You make five major changes. Is that still your father's will? This book, the King James Version, alone has gone through five major revisions. That's what they say. When you say major, you're talking linguistic changes? Talking they, they, about say, they, they say five major revisions. The Revised Standard Version, the people who did that, 32 scholars of highest eminence, backed by 50 cooperating denominations, 50 cooperating denominations, they got together and they produced the RSV, Revised Standard Version. In the preface, they say, 
King James Version. <coughs> one of the most fantastic books in, in its simplicity, in its, uh, you know, all the language that they use is beautiful, you know. Yet, the King James Version has grave defects. I didn't say that. The, Jews, the Christian scholars, they said this one has got grave defects. And that's de these defects are so many and so serious as to call for revision. Now, this 50,070. The latest Bible you get, they got only 70. <laughs> it's by the minute. By the minute. As soon as I talk about it, they start saying, no, no, no. 50,070 is too much. So in the margin at the bottom, they put down, in Hebrew, it is 50,070. Is this then in the Gospel of Barabbas? No. So now, I'm asking, do you believe this to be the word of God? He said, yes. If it's the word of God, what right have you to change? If God said 50,070, damn it all in Hebrew, what right have you to make it 70? Huh? Yeah, no right. Is this God come to you now? He's inspiring you to change that. Now in the next one, they'll have the 70 and that note will be taken away. It's gradual. They're programming you, they're brainwashing you. You know, to accept whatever they are. They're changing by the minute, by the minute. But still we can use this. All this, what I've given you in the combat kit, is in every Bible. <coughs> Whether Jehovah's Witness version, or the RSV, or the King James, anything, everything you'll find everywhere. Yes, my shine. Are changing the Bible they're taking the Christians. They surely have rigged these scriptures, the accounts of the incident, adultery, and that. Why were they all taken out? No, no, you can't. You see, you got them by the millions. South Africa is producing another hundred million now. How many million? You're producing again, forgiving for free distribution. Millions! <laughs> if I give you figures, they sound so fantastic. They're talking about the billions. Right? So now, how can you change the billions? But gradually, you do it gradually. 50,070? <laughs> I can't accept that. So, we'll put down 70. If you have time, you come and see me. I'll give you, show you the Bible. It says 70. But at the margin, note there, say in Hebrew, it is 50,070. If you believe that this was God's word, what right have you to change? But you don't. Nobody really believes. This is only talk. Do you believe this should be the word of God? He said, yes. Did God dictate this? All this? He dictated it. Can you read it to your mother? Your sister, your daughter? So the guy says, no. So why can't you? Yes. Did Allah actually send any Bible to the earth? No, he didn't actually send the Bible. He didn't actually send the Quran. He didn't send, have this printed in heaven. He didn't have this printed in heaven. Right. God inspired his messengers. Moses, we believe, was inspired. David was inspired. Solomon was inspired. Jesus was inspired. Muhammad was inspired. But the unfortunate part is that in the time of Moses, Moses didn't have it written down. Things were written on a tablet of stone. So they say, these five books, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy, if you are to transcribe it on stones, you'll need a monumental 70-story block of flats to hold those stones. <laughs> Where did Moses have that? No, no. So that is just a few little things we are talking about. Now, when you read it, we find that this is not the work of Moses. You see, 700 times in these five books, supposed to be the books of Moses, 700 times you are told that this is not the word of God and this is not the word of Moses. 700 times. It says, and the Lord spoken to Moses, and Moses spoken to the Lord, and the Lord spoken to Moses, the Lord said unto Moses, and Moses said unto the Lord. So the Lord didn't speak that and nor did Moses speak it. Who speak? Somebody else. If Moses wrote it, he said, the Lord spoke unto me, and I said to the Lord, if God dictated it, so I told Moses, and Moses said this, and Moses said that, and I told him this. That's how you talk. But he says, the Lord said unto Moses, and the, Moses said unto the Lord, who's talking? Third neither, person. Mo, third person. neither Moses nor God wrote these things. 
and inside you find the end. Moses died. It's supposed to be the book of Moses. He wrote it. Chapter 34 of Deuteronomy. And Moses died. Died. You know, past tense. Died in the land of Moab over against the fear. And no man knoweth of his sepulchre unto this day. Nobody knows about his grave up to today. Moses writing that before he died. And Moses was 120 years old when he died. He's writing that before he died. I was 120 years old when I died. And his natural powers had not abated. He was still fit and young. He had another 16 year old wife. He would have done justice to her. Still the same. Did he say that? That another 12 year old wife I can handle her too. Did he say that? No. It's on the face of it. Jesus. We say he was inspired by God. But he didn't write one word. Not one word was written by him. Nor did he ask anybody to write a word. And not a word was written in his lifetime. <laughs> I'm talking. Talk to me. Not one word was written in his lifetime. Not one word. So yes, my son. How many holy books did Allah send to this? He sent to every prophet a message. Which we call a book. See, when Allah speaks to our Nabi, he says, al -kitabu la This is the book. In it is guided and sure, without doubt. But this Quran wasn't there. See, it is in the process. The book we are talking about. The book, the book. I'm writing the book. But I'm just in the first page yet. It might turn out to be 500 pages. So what are you doing? I'm writing a book. But that book will turn out to be an encyclopedia. Where is that book? It's in my head. So this Torah, is Zabun, and Jesus. Oh, no, no, it was revealed. But those words were not preserved. <coughs> David couldn't have had this written. None of those three books were preserved. None. In the, Moses didn't write a word. David, Solomon didn't write these things. Jesus didn't write a single word. Things are written about him. And also written by the gospel according to St. Matthew. The gospel according to St. Mark. The gospel according to St. Luke. The gospel according to St. John. And I'm asking, what is according to? Why do you say according to? This book... I wrote Ahmad did that. Look at this. He says Ahmad did that. Can you see that? Huh? He doesn't say according to Ahmad did that. <laughs> nah, but you write about what I'm telling you. You can say according to Dida. You could be misquoting me. You could have misunderstood everything. And you can say according to Mr. Dida this and according to but it's just exactly opposite of what I'm telling you. That's according to me. What you are writing. What I write is what I write. Jesus didn't write one word. Matthew didn't write it. Matthew didn't write Matthew. Mark didn't write Mark. Luke didn't write Luke. And John didn't write John. <laughs> not one of them is attested. Not one is signed. Not one is autographed. But this is when it suits you, so you say. Gospel according to St. Matthew, according to St. Mark, according to St. Luke, according to St. This is the way. The Quran is the only revealed book that it is extended to the day it was presented. 1400 years ago, this book is the only book which has remained unchanged for 1400 years. The Bible, I'm telling you, is changing by the minute. By the minute they are changing. And the version. What you find in Zulu, you don't find it in, in African, you don't find it in English. In English Bible, it says Jesus Christ. And Jesus happened to be about 30 years old when he began to preach. Who being the son of Joseph. In brackets, as was supposed. The words are in brackets, as was supposed. That's what people were talking. That's what people understood. That he was the son of Joseph. He wasn't. The words as was supposed are written in brackets. That's in English. English Bible. The Zulus, what do they understand what is a bracket? Huh? You know what is the bracket? Those are your fathers. They knew what the bracket means. No. So they got the words as was supposed, but the brackets are taken out. In Afrikaans, same. They got the words as was supposed, but the brackets are taken out. The poor Africana, just like the African. Same mentality. He doesn't know the difference between a bracket. Same. For the Chwanas, Kosas, everybody. The words are there, but the brackets are taken away. Because you people don't understand brackets, my son. Bracket means that the original author Luke, he didn't write those words. God didn't inspire him with that. These are the words of a translator. But you can suck that as God's words. 
So they remove the brackets, it becomes the word of Luke, and if Luke was inspired, it becomes the word of Paul. They're minting it. The words of brackets are not there, the brackets are removed. Because you people haven't got the sense. But the African also. He also hasn't got the sense. The African's Bible also to remove the brackets. Yes? Another point of clarity. Yes. Some light on Saint Barnabas. Yes. Yes. If, if you could give us some clarity on uh, the Gospel of Barnabas. That's a long story. A long story. You see, the Quran tells us anybody makes any claim, anybody, Hindu, Muslim, Christian, anybody makes any claim, Kul Hatu Burhan. Ask him for his Burhan. Ask him for his Burhan. His proof. You tell me this probably belongs to you. Huh? So I said, my son, I think surely something has gone wrong with you. Maybe you've taken some pills. Or you're off your rocker. This is yours, this is yes. So I'm gonna say you're a bloody lunatic. If you have a lunatic, you're gonna put a knife through me. You know that. If I'm a wise guy, I say, yes, my son, you know, have you got a title deed? Yes. So can I have a look? Oh, yes. You got a newspaper cutting when you were feeding the pigeons one day. So I said, no, the guy is really off his head. So I said, my son, this is yours. Come, 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 sit down. You have some tea, some biscuits? Come, come, sit down. I'll humor you. See? But Allah says, ask him for his proof. Natural, man. He says Christ died for the sins. Ask him for his proof. He said, Jesus is God. He said, your proof. So he produced it. Yeah. So, the very fact that Allah commands us to demand proof, it presupposes that when proof is produced, you'll be able to analyze it. That's what it means. We should be in a position to analyze it. That's what we are doing. And when you analyze, he hasn't got a lecture stamp. Whatever he's telling is all fairy tales, fibs. But now you have to learn, know his book. Well, he said, in my book. He said, what does it say? Come, 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 let's have a look. What does it say? And it doesn't say what he's telling you. So Jesus is God. He said, did he say that? Did he say I'm God? Did he say worship me? Anywhere in the Bible, any book, any version of the Bible, can you show me? Anywhere in any Bible, you got a dozen Bible by the dozens. Do you know the different dozen versions? Dozens, hundreds of versions. Is there a single version where Jesus says I'm God? Is there a single verse in any Bible where he says, worship me? Is there? So he's asking me, you mean to say he's not there? I said, no. He says, your book, you show me. Jesus says, I'm God, I'm prepared to accept him. If he says he's God, I accept him, because I know he'll never lie. If he says, worship me, I'm prepared to worship him. Because I don't speak for these people. You, my children, I don't speak for you. I speak for myself. If Jesus says he's God, then he's God. If he says, worship me, I'm prepared to worship him. It isn't, because the Quran tells you there's no such thing. And you verify there's no such thing. So to ask him, where does he say I'm God? Where does he say worship me? Show me. You see what happens. He's helpless. Show me in your book, your Jehovah's Witness version, your Roman Catholic version, your any version on earth, man. Show me where Jesus says I'm God or where he says worship me. That is it. That's the way to talk. But you are not prepared to do homework. People are not prepared to do homework. You're not prepared to do some exercise. Do some exercise. And you watch, man. These people are, will fall like nine pins before you. They haven't got a leg to stand upon. With this book, the guy's getting customers. With this incest, sex, pornography of the highest order, most shameful deeds, and he's getting customers. And you and I, we are not getting past customers with the Quran. You and I, you are not getting converts with the Quran. As a whole. Compared to the Christian. Am I right? You give me an answer. Why? I give you this book. Anybody tell me. How is it that the Christian with all this, what we're dealing with just now, with that kind of stuff, he's catching fish. He's getting converts. And you and I, we can't get converts with the Quran. You Give me the answer, this book is yours. Yes, yes, my son. Ignorance. But mm. No. Got to product, you know, but marketing strategy. Mm. Mm. Simple, the answer is very simple. Why is it that you and I can't get converts with the Quran and the Christian is getting converted with this? Why? 
you get the smoke. Come, come. The Christians make it very alluring. Don't rot the people. But uh, when when somebody reads Quran, he says, oh, it's all bindings. We are afraid to present the Quran to them on the notion that the non Muslim can't touch it. We're not reading it. So no, the answer is yes. Why the Muslim is not getting converts? Actually, we are reading this paper, uh, the Holy Paper, uh, yeah, yeah, uh, it's not about uh, set up for Africa as a whole. Because uh, those are the people, people who came first to produce uh, this paper to us. So we don't know nothing about the uh, about Israelist uh, Bible or whatever it is. So I wonder why is the Muslim not getting converts? Well, probably we're not working yeah, with the missionary team. Huh? They're not conversing. You're not talking. You're not talking, man! You're not talking. You got to say, you got to talk. The Christian is talking, you're not talking. Open your mouth and talk. Talk, man, talk. You are not talking. You're not conversing. Say, this in his words, he says, he's not talking. We are not talking. That's yours. Now, you all are entitled to a Quran each. You all are, in, are entitled to this Bible, the choice each. Anytime you have time during the week, you pop into my office. Say, Sir, what I'm in Zion, or good morning. Or, he said, look, that Quran I want, free, I'll give it to you. Everybody is entitled to. You come along, I'll explain to you how it works, and I'll present it to you. That book, The Choice, also everybody is entitled to a book, free of charge. And any further questions you have, any criticism, you please come and say, Uncle, but you see, you said this, that, that, but you're very unfair, you're very unjust. You know, look, the position is like this. Come and talk to me, and you'll find me, and you know, I speak loud. You know, it's, it seems to terrify people that I'm shouting, I'm scolding. I'm not scolding, that's my voice. It carries like that. But now, you'll find me very, very cooperative, and you'll find me very humble too. So, you are all entitled to the Quran each, and you are all entitled to the book, the choice, free of charge. But you have to come and see me. Yes, my child. Uh, Now, I do not know the exact name, and uh, I think you see the African people, they have a certain disadvantage. Their language was not written. Yours is not a written language. You know, before the white man came to teach you A, B, C, D, you didn't know how to read or write. The Zulus, Batulus, Basutus, Khazas, Chwanas, everybody. You know, they didn't know how to read or write. So, they're talking about God, they call him Umvelin beautiful word. Umvelinka. I says now I'm asking him what is this Umvelinka? He explains to me. Beautiful explanation. And all these things he knew that adultery was bad, stealing was bad, lying was bad. Yes. Murder was bad. Yes. Where did you get it? So the Zulu tells me and the Khazars will tell me, say, Mabam Kulu Washapo. You know, our grandfather said that. And our grandfather said that. Who was this grandfather of yours? Maybe that grandfather of yours was a prophet. But because you didn't have a written language, you said Babam Kulu, Babam Kulu, Babam Kulu. Everybody says Babam Kulu, you know, our great grandfathers, our great grandfathers. Yeah. I says, now, you did, we're not able to preserve. But religion is there. And your concept is there. That you worship God Almighty as a spiritual being. Umoya or Imwal is a pure and holy spirit. That's your concept. That is the true concept of God. The Jews. After hundreds of prophets coming to them, prophets after prophets, they still worship the golden calf. Your fathers, they didn't have a written book. You haven't got a prophet to your name. But you didn't worship idols. Not a single African tribe south of the Zambezi ever made images of their God. Ever. Never. Not one. I don't know why. Couldn't you carve out the art of wood, the shape of a man or a monkey? The Zulu says yes. Khazar says yes. The person, everybody says yes, they could. Out of clay, couldn't you make a shape of a man or a woman or a lion or a tiger? I said yes. Then why didn't you make this of your own willing God? So he tells how means that. How can you make an image of Umoya or Umoya? He is a pure and holy spirit. I said that's a right concept of God. Without a written book, without a prophet that you can name, 
You are the people of God. You are the sons of God. Not the Jews. They were chosen. But they again and again they fell into idol worship. Again and again. The Bible says, as the number of the cities are thy gods. So Israel, as the number of cities you got, so many gods you got. You people, he said, Tika, Mudimo, give him a word. What is your concept? He's not like a man. He's not like a monkey. He's not like an elephant. He's not like a snake. He said, that is God. That is what I want to tell you. That's nothing new. Nothing new. In Islam, we're not telling you anything new that you don't know. He said, let's go back to worship that God. The Father in heaven. He is the real God. Not Jesus, not Moses, not Muhammad, not Rama, not Krishna, not Buddha. The unseen God of the universe. As I worship him. Your fathers worshipped him, so let's go back to him. Worship the Father in heaven. Right, we will go to the mosque now and we will witness the Muslim at prayer. And we will hear the call to prayer. After that, those who want to join us in prayer, they may. The rest can sit down and watch. And immediately after that, just behind that place, there is a hotel there. We will go and have our lunch together. Okay, the children. We will go to the mosque now. We will take off our shoes and just can explain to you what goes on and how the Muslims pray. By the time you hear the call and we have to tell you what the call is. And then you watch the Muslim at prayer and we have our lunch. And you are all, you can also come. And then take the lady also for making salah. Inshallah, we'll be open. I'll see you that is open. And anybody wants this book? Uh, what the Bible says about Muhammad? Is the Bible about Muhammad? Okay. Okay. Yeah, the pens, pens. The Bible is yours. But the pens are mine.